Thanks, everybody. So um, I'm trying to talk about what does AAIF offer for archives. Um, and I think one way to think of AAIF is as the next step for viewing images on the web. I first got involved in archival work here at the Archives of American Art 12 years ago. Is this working? Oh, wait, yep. This is what looking at an image looked like at the Archives of American Art on May 20th, 2005, a week before I started working um, at the Archives full time. One of my first tasks was to get fully digitized collections online. In addition to figuring out how to link the images to the finding aid description, I also needed to figure out the best way to show individual images. I saw a demo of an image viewer at the um, Society of American Archivists SSA conference in 2006 when it was here in DC, and I tried to build something similar. So this is the first effort. And then a few years later, I saw a TED Talk video about Sea Dragon, which wowed me with its ability to effortlessly zoom in and out of high resolution images. Now, this kind of functionality is taken for granted. So for museums, libraries, and archives, the next stage is what extra value are we going to give to the user besides just showing an image? And more importantly, what value could that user give back to us? Right now, the Archives of American Art has a project using the Smithsonian Transcription Center to transcribe correspondence from the Jack Sub Jacques Seligman Gallery Records. Nearly 20,000 pages have been transcribed, and they add a lot of value for researchers using, using our materials. Currently, those transcripts live separately from the images they're transcribing. That is to say, if you go to our public website, you will not see those transcripts there, and here you do not see these images in their finding aid context. One of the provinces of IIIF is that annotation tools will allow researchers to add value in the forms of transcription or metadata while they're looking at an image. So here you see a hypothetical annotation of one of our um, diaries of one of the artists that we have in our collection. And here you would have an opportunity to have the user just basically transcribe down the page as they're in the actual context of our, of our collections. This is important because the archives currently generates around 2,000 images a week, several boxes filled with hundreds of folders. There simply isn't enough time to add any metadata below the folder level, and oftentimes, even that description is very minimal. Our users can be stand-ins for, for the cataloging description and transcription that we can't provide. Dedicated volunteers could transcribe important records just as they do now with our Seligman records. An army of art historians could mark up photos and letters with links to images of the works of art that they are describing or depicting. But visitors to our website can also introduce information that we would never be able to provide. This could be the friends and family of artists providing context to a letter or a photo. Or it could be a pognophiliac, that is, someone who loves beards using annotation to circle all of the mustaches and beards in our photos of Hudson River school painters. IIIF offers other opportunities for enhancing the richness of data besides annotations. Because manifests can be nested, this enables combining image sets and metadata from separate institutions into a combined manifest. In 2011, the archives was a contributor, along with others, to Syracuse University's Marcel Breuer Digital Archive, at the time, transferring our data and images into a format that they could use was cumbersome. In the future, a project of this nature could use manifests generated by each partner or organization separately to create a unified interface for viewing digital materials. Finally, for me as a developer, one of the most impressive, impressive aspects of IIIF is the strong emphasis on APIs. These APIs, clearly delineate the appearance and behavior for, of viewers, that is like the viewers that are showing these images. However, the breadth of functionality that has been considered and the extensibility that these APIs allow means that they don't constrain developers, but rather free us to imagine new opportunities to engage and even, amazing, and even amaze our users. Thank you.